Welcome. In this problem, we want to look at a quadratic equation. Now, this quadratic equation will be packaged up into a word problem. Now, that can make things especially difficult because in a word problem, it's not always obvious exactly how we will come up with a quadratic equation or how we will solve it. So watch the steps carefully to see how we build this particular quadratic equation. Remember that a quadratic equation in standard form looks like this. Uh, the key feature we want to look at is that x squared term. Because we don't want to get rid of that, the a in front of x squared cannot be zero. Now, when you're dealing with one of these, there are basically four ways you can solve it. You could either try and factor the problem and then use the principle of zero products. You could try a direct approach. This uses something like square roots. You could complete the square, but probably everyone's favorite, you could use the quadratic formula. All right, so let's look at our example problem that we have. So in this problem, we have a screwdriver that has dropped from the top of an elevator shaft. Exactly five and a half seconds later, the sound of that screwdriver hitting the bottom is actually heard. And the question is, how deep is the shaft? Now in order to solve this problem, we do get a couple of hints. The first is that the distance that an object falls after t seconds can, rep can be represented by this formula. Another little hint that we get is that the speed of sound travels at 1,100 feet per second. Now before we can ever really start building that equation to solve, we really have to understand this problem as best as possible. So to start, you know, maybe we'll start off with something like a diagram. So here we have our elevator shaft and there's our screwdriver all the way at the top. Now, this thing is going to fall down the shaft and it's going to take some time to do it, but eventually it's going to hit the bottom. And when it hits the bottom, it will produce a sound. Now that sound is going to travel all the way back up the elevator shaft until our person at the very top actually hears the sound. Now take a few moments to look at this diagram because there are a few things in here that you should notice about our problem. The first thing that you should notice is that the five and a half seconds given in the problem, well that's the total time for this entire process to happen. So five and a half seconds isn't just the falling time, that's the time for the screwdriver to fall and the sound to travel back up. Another thing you want to notice is that the distance it falls and the distance the sound has to travel, both those distances are actually the same. And more importantly, both those distances actually represent the depth of the shaft. Now that we understand a little bit more about our problem, we can actually start setting up our unknowns. So one of our unknowns is the time it takes for this screwdriver to fall all the way down the shaft. I'm going to call that T1. Another unknown is the time it takes for the sound to travel all the way back up. I'm going to call that one T2. And the last unknown deals with the actual depth of the shaft. Just for simplicity, I'll just call this D. Using these unknowns with some information from the problem, we can start to build a few equations along the way. So one of the first things that we can build uh, comes from the fact that the entire process for the screwdriver to fall and to go back up takes five and a half seconds. So that's really a combination of both of our times, our falling time going down and our sound time going back up. So that gives us this equation right here. Another thing we can use uh, comes from one of those hints. This is the one that says, all right, a falling object travels this distance after so much time. So using our unknowns, that formula now looks like this. Last, we had a formula for the distance that sound travels. Again, I'm going to use my unknowns that I've chose uh, to go ahead and make an equation for that. Now there is one very important aspect about these equations that you want to notice. In my formula for the distance of a falling object and my formula for sound, notice how I use d in both of them. That's because the distance the screwdriver is falling and the distance the sound is going must be the same, and they're both the distance of the shaft. This will be especially important later on. With these equations, we can start to connect our information a little bit better. Now since the distance it falls is the same as the distance the sound has to travel, 
we're going to connect those two equations by actually setting them equal to one another. Now, that's a pretty good equation. It is quadratic, but I have two variables in there, and I only want one if I'm going to solve it. So in order to help me out with this, I'm going to borrow one of those other equations, uh, the one that deals with time. If I take that one and I solve it for t2, then I can take that information and actually substitute it into my quadratic. Now what that gives me is a quadratic equation and I only have one variable, just the t1. This is something that I can actually move forward and try and solve. So here is our quadratic equation that we want to solve. Now, unfortunately, it's not in a very good form in order to solve it. We want to put this into standard form. In order to move it into that form, there are a few things I have to do. First, I'm going to try and distribute the 1,100 inside of my parentheses. That will free up one of my variables a little bit better. Then I'm going to subtract the 16t1 squared from both sides. This is because in standard form, it's actually equal to zero. So I want to move everything over to one side. Now, lastly, I want to make sure that my powers are in descending order. That means I'm going to swap around the 6,050 uh, with the 1,100, you know, swap those two terms around. That way, all of my variables are in descending order in terms of their power. Now, if you compare this with standard form, you can see that, yep, we finally have our quadratic equation in a very nice form, and we can solve it. Now earlier we saw that we had four different methods that we could actually go through and try and solve a quadratic equation. Looking at this one, uh, there's probably only one of those approaches I'm going to take. If we look at this, notice how our numbers are fairly large, and it's not really obvious how I'm going to factor this out. For this reason, it's probably most convenient to try and use the quadratic formula. Now, in order to use the quadratic formula, you have to properly identify what to use for a, b, and c. And this comes from every one of our terms. So here I've laid them all out, and you can see exactly what you should use for a, b, and c. And also make sure to take the signs associated with those terms. So for a, don't use just 16. Use the entire thing. Use negative 16. Now, since the purpose of this example is really just to show you how to set up the problem and uh, really arrive at a solution, I'm going to skip over the quadratic formula part and instead just present my solutions. So according to the quadratic formula, I have two solutions for t1. I have negative 73.89 and 5.12. Now in the context of the problem, immediately we run into uh, kind of a problem. That's because this t1 that uh, we've represented here represents a time. And we can't have a negative time. So immediately, I'm going to get rid of that solution. And I'm going to work with a 5.12. At this point in the problem, it's really tempting to say, hey, we've solved the problem. I have an answer. But if you look back all the way at the original, we're not really trying to figure out the time that the screwdriver fell. We actually want to know the depth of the shaft. Well, this means we're not quite done. But we're very close. If we borrow the distance formula just one more time, we can actually figure out the distance uh, that it fell, which happens to be the same as the depth of the shaft. So here's that formula one more time. Now into this formula, I'm going to put that 5.12 that we found for t1. After simplifying it, working it out, I got something like 419.43. Now this is the distance of the shaft, therefore we've finally solved our problem.